PlayStation's broken. Dad? 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 Darth has asked me to fix a PlayStation. Overheating problem. It's quite common. Apparently, these things, these PlayStation 4s, have, have a known fault with doing that sort of thing. Now, it's usually aggravated and brought on a lot quicker when they're not mounted flat on the table as I have this one. But when they mount up on their end, like so, what tends to happen is you block a whole side of the air intake system. Now, I have taken some of the muck out on this one. This is what gets caught up, and this is a combination of skin, hair, deodorant, you name it, it's 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 dust in your house. So the first thing I'm going to suggest is have your PlayStation 4 flat. If you can't do that because of space, get one of the extra fan bases. They're about £30 or $30. I've seen them on Amazon. And they will also, as well as giving you the extra fans, actually give you some more USB ports on the front for extra controllers or extra hard drives, memory sticks, you name it, you can add it in on the front rather than having to reach all the way around the back of the unit. So I think the thing to do is to take this apart and show you exactly where the, the fans are and the way of cleaning them out. This particular PlayStation 4 is quite an early one. It's out of warranty. And that's the prime thing I'm going to tell you first. If your unit is still covered by warranty, take it back to the shop. Don't mess around with it. Don't do anything spectacular. Take it back to the shop. Let them deal with it. Don't ruin the warranty. With that, let's get into it and show you how it's done. The first thing you're going to say is, how do you get into this? And it's actually quite straightforward, even though you can't see any screw holes. Now, Sony being Sony, I'm going to turn that up that way. Just here, here and here, you have stickers. And they actually cover up the screw holes. And there you go, you can see you've got one, two, three, four screws. And they actually require Torx T8 size screwdriver. So just fit your Torx driver in and out they come. Right, so at this point, you should be able to get this cover off just by gently using a little bit of pressure from the back. As you see, it springs off quite nicely and we've already got quite good evidence that this may be a little bit dusty and it may be why it's overheating. Now the next thing to do is to take out the power supply unit which is here and the way you do that, that uses a Phillips screwdriver. You take out this one, this one and then you go back to your Torx driver to take Torx screwdrivers out. There should be three of them. The next thing to do is to take out this power supply cable here. But it just unplugs like that. From there you can just lift out the power supply unit. There we go. Just a little bit stiff, but that's the whole power supply unit. Now again, and you can see in the power supply unit that there is dust. The insides of the power supply unit still can have large amounts of electricity in them even with nothing powered on and the reason for that is there are some very large capacitors in here which will hold a charge. If you take one of these apart you do so entirely at your own risk you're just as liable to kill yourself as well as damage the unit. Don't take it apart but leave it in one piece you can still blow some air through it and you can still get rid of the dust. Let's put that to one side. You can see we're now coming to the nitty gritty of the board and that there is dust over quite a large amount of this, this board. 
Now to take the next bit out is fairly straightforward again, but first we have to remove the Wi-Fi antenna connection, which is this little thing here, and that just clips up with your fingernail. You unhook it from these clips. Just remember where it was routed. Also, you need to remove this particular connector, which will unclip. Then you have to take out this cable here. You only need to take it from one end. To do that, you just push down on the metal bit and it will unclip from the retaining connector. While we're here, let's just check that the fan isn't seized. And as you can see, the fan does spin. Now what we've got to do is we've also got to undo now the other casing so that we can get to the underside of this fan unit because it's held on from underneath with the motherboard. Take out the torque screws and the Phillips screws at the edge but you don't need to take these ones off at the top. You just need this one, this one, this one, this one, and there's one tucked in just under here, which connects this to the bottom. So away we go. That one comes out. That one, as you see, that's a bracket for the Wi-Fi antenna. That's a Phillips screw. That one's there. There is a screw here which has to come off. Everything should be free and we should be able to remove the casing from the rest of the unit like this. So that comes up again. That is the Blu-ray drive. We'll put that to one side hard drive casing should be, there we go, that's loose, back clips off, and there's the inside of that, again dust, again dust on the back of the motherboard plate, Keep the Wi-Fi aerial separate, we don't want to lose that. Now we want to take off all of the screws that have arrows pointing to them. And that is the way you get the motherboard out and expose the fan. Okay, and that is actually the pressure bracket that holds the heatsink to the main processor. At this point, you can now remove the hard drive and the plate. And here's the motherboard. And what we just want to do is we just want to check that, first of all, all of the thermal pads are in place. Now, they're not, but th four of them are connected here. That's the fan connector itself. It just clips upwards from underneath. So you put your fingernail underneath the grey connector and it clips upwards. Then the whole motherboard is then free to come out. Now let's have a look. The paste is actually pretty good on the, on the processor, but I will clean that and replace it. There is dust on the battery. Around some of the other connectors, I'll give that a quick blow off. Now, never use anything stronger than air. You don't need to use solvents, you don't need to use acetone nail cleaner, PCB cleaners. You don't need any of that to do this job. You just need either a tin of compressed air or 
in my case I'm going to use my little compressor and just blow the dirt out using that. You don't want to sit here indoors and breathe all of this in so your best bet is once you've got it to this stage take it outside and then you can blow it through properly. There are now three screws and they're Phillips screws one two and three here I've already taken them out because there's nothing special about the screws but this is where the whole of the heatsink assembly comes apart and here we go now before I turn this over and show you here is the fan from the underneath and you could already see there's a lot of dust and dirt but it is still spinning compressed air will blow all of that out but here is what is causing your overheating problem all of this dust on this heatsink and let's have a look 50% of the airflow there is being obstructed now you lose half your cooling your machine doesn't take very long to overheat blow through with compressed air is going to clean all of this off see it builds up in all the tangs builds up everywhere you just blow through that I will also blow through the fan and clean all the fan the sides the top everything off and then all we have to do is put it back together not very difficult at all is it okay so one quick blow job later and I've cleaned out the heatsink with the compressed air and I've also cleaned all of the fan mechanism up it's now black instead of grey before I actually put the final bits together what I am going to do is I'm just going to take the brush and gently run it through the heatsink just to make sure that there's no loose dirt and there's not you know it's coming coming up it's, it's just mainly to brush it all off and make sure that I've done a, a reasonable job so the first thing you do same as we did before we put the base down the heatsink goes this way up my PlayStation and I'm all happy. As you saw in the video, it didn't take long and he did a really nice job. It doesn't make lots of horrible noise anymore and it really, really, really works well. I can play all my favourite games without having it cut out and overheat and say I'm shutting down. So I'm a really happy guinea pig. Thanks very much for watching my dad. He's not a bad bloke really. If you do like the videos, Please like, please subscribe, and click the bell to get all the notifications of all his new videos, because that would make him really happy. I love my dad. Bye for now.